Hi, um, nice to see everyone. I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving and I hope you guys have a beautiful holiday season coming up. Um, so you guys are gonna kill me again. Um, so I'm actually splitting this up even further with the energetic strands and like how to uh, cut them. And next week I'll be talking about uh, probably 10 more methods on how you can cut your energetic strands. And then the following week um, I'll be talking about protection methods. And why I'm breaking this up is because in general, I think my business is going in a direction where I just want to give quick tidbits of information because a lot of us are busy. Um, I am busy. You guys are busy. So I think that the best route um, for these alternative healing lessons are something that's quick and easy for you to watch each week where you're getting this information that you can actually implement. Um, it's going to be best for me. I think it's going to be best for you. I really do believe that my business is going that in that direction. I'm going to have to um, change everything around so that it's it's easily attainable, um, but also you can take action steps from this every single week. Um, so last week we talked about different ways that you can cut your cords. Um, I think we talked about uh, meditation, uh, using your intuition to find them, and also using um, a divination to find out what cords you actually have. Um, and before I actually talk about how to cut them or just a couple of methods on how you can actually cut them, um, I really wanted to talk about the deeper meaning behind energetic strands and why we have them. Um, this is really important because, yes, I'm sure you have that knowing or maybe you did the meditations or maybe you did um, some type of divination where you found out like all of these cords that you may have but also you might get into an argument or sometimes even a person's name is brought up and you just get that um, that sinking energy somewhere in your body and you know for a fact that you have a cord you know attached to this person and it's negatively affecting your life so it's really important to ask yourself um, why it's affecting you, right? Because there's usually a deeper meaning behind this. And I've been struggling um, with this myself for the last couple of months, and that's why I feel like I really need to share this information with you guys. And I talked about um, this stuff a lot today with my friend um, as well, right? Um, so this is really shadow work that we're talking about here. Um, so I have some questions for you guys that I think that maybe you need to take some time to think about this. Um, and it's never an attack on yourself and it's, it's, it's just being truly honest so that we can make these realizations about our shadow aspects um, and, and parts of ourselves that we're not allowing ourselves to be. Um, because that's really where our cords come from, right? We we tend to, if it is with another person, right? Like we are in the right and they are in the wrong because they are um, sometimes evil or sometimes we view them as disgusting people, um, right? We are bad and they are wrong. There's like, there's like a division and all of their wrongdoings um, tend to really affect us and sometimes the people that we love. Right. Um, when we see these these people that we have negative cords to um, really sometimes wreaking havoc on those that we love and then that ends up affecting us or or to us in general. Um, you know, there's a deeper meaning there. And so with that said, I'd like you to ask yourself. Um, do you enjoy um, having your energy depleted because it feels good, right? Uh, when someone needs you, right? Do you, do you crave being needed? It's almost like the um, the superhero, right? The superhero, the superwoman type person where, um, you know, I did this a lot. Uh, I have a family member that used to call me all the time 
when um, she was under the influence and I would go and pick her up at 3 a.m. in the morning, 4 a.m. in the morning, and it made me feel special, right? This person's in need and they're calling me. They're not calling anyone else. Like that made me feel special or um, sometimes also like when people reveal their, uh, you know, their stresses or their secrets, the fact that they called me, right? Doesn't that kind of give you something? But even at the same time, like you might actually be, um, you know, annoyed after a while. Like it seemed good at first and now it's not seeming so good because you're realizing that your energy is getting depleted or now it's it's hindering a lot of aspects of your life. Um, so, you know, do you do you actually give your power away because you're a people pleaser? Like, uh, um, I'm sure you guys are going to relate to this. A lot of the times, like, we hold our tongues or uh, we just do something to make someone else happy because we're a people pleaser and it ends up um, really affecting our energy over time. That can create a cord. Uh, do you need to be approved of so much that you throw your needs under the bus. That's another one too. And again, like all these things tend to stem from childhood, which is like where a lot of our shadow work um, takes place in your childhood. Cause that's where a lot of our beliefs come from, right? A lot of our needs that weren't met come from our childhood. Uh, do you have a love and a hate relationship with yourself that causes you to draw negative relationships into your life. That's a really good one. Um, and sometimes this stuff is subconscious, right? Sometimes this stuff is, is subconscious, but um, I hope as we work together and we grow that you guys can start to realize these things. You know, it's hard to be like, wow, I can't believe I attracted this into my life, but we're all here to learn lessons. We're all growing at a different rate. Um, and we all have to basically follow this path that we were meant, like you are here because obviously you're meant for, for more in life. You're meant for something special, for something um, very loved based. And it's in, um, it's really hard to take a look at yourself and be like, you know, what am I doing wrong when perhaps you are already so hard on yourself? It's not what you're doing wrong, but it's more like, um, you know, how do I really feel about myself? Like, do I actually beat myself up uh, subconsciously, right? Do I really feel like I don't deserve a good relationship or do I really feel like um, I have to date someone who is, um, who, who can't stand up for himself. So I have to protect him. I have to be there. Um, you know, like you have to start thinking like that because if you don't resolve the underlying issue as to why you have these cords, you're just going to either attach to new people or you're going to reattach to the same person that is sucking your energy. Another question you can ask is, do you need drama to distract yourself from other things? Right? Maybe there's something else going on uh, deep down that you're trying to distract yourself from. So you attract these people that create a lot of drama in your life, right? Do you feel, um, you know, maybe you want to start your own business and you're afraid of failure, right? So you attract all these distractions into your life so that you never even get that opportunity to even fail or succeed. You're like blocking yourself. Um, so another question is like, do you feel like a victim or a good guy, a good guy versus them who are bad guys that uh, tends to lean more towards we have an aspect um, of ourselves that we are denying and we can see that in the other person. Um, for example, or I'll, I'll bring this up in a, in a little bit. Another question is, do you enjoy being a hero that's always righting the wrongs? Uh, do you know that you have weak personal boundaries? Because <clears throat> that's another thing too, is if you have a weak, if you have weak boundaries, if people know that they can step on you, 
and they might not be doing this to be mean and they might not be doing this maliciously, but I think it's almost like um, an instinct. Like you see like my dogs, for example. Um, I have a dog, one of my dogs, my one-year-old Loki, he is very submissive to my other dog, Evie. Um, but if I take him out in public, he is trying to make, like overcompensate for the boundaries that he never put up with my other dog. So that's something too that you just really got to watch out for is like, you know, you need to put up boundaries with what you're going to take from people. Um, but also like if you've noticed, like if you get into a fight with someone and you're so like affected by it or you're almost like cower cowering, like I'll be the first to admit, like I am a person that will cower, right? If someone fights or if someone's getting angry, like I tend to hide. Like I want to get away from a situation. It scares the shit out of me. I don't like confrontation. And that's because I have um, weak personal boundaries. I do. So that's something that I have to work on. But at least I can be honest about that. And I know that about myself and I am trying to work on it. This also comes into play with manifestation, right? If you don't, <clears throat> hold on. So these type of people that we're energetically bound to, right, with these cords, because we end up getting, um, Sometimes people who appear bad tend to have a lot of things that we feel like we deserve, right? But I was talking about this today with a friend where um, I think really what it is is that they are 100% convinced that they are good people, right? They are, um, they deserve the best. Like sometimes these, these terrible people that, that we may, we may know, and like, we may think that they are bad people. They have all the riches in the world. They have all the abundance. Meanwhile, like people, other people are sitting back and they might be good people. And they're wondering, why am I not attracting abundance into my life? Why am I not attracting, um, a lot of money, but yet these people are right. Or like they, they end up getting what they want, no matter what, even if they are, um, very bitchy or very domineering about it. They end up getting what they want. And I really believe it's because they 100% are confident in themselves and they are they expect it, right? Like if, even if they act in a certain way, um, they end up getting what they want because they believe with 100% conviction that they, um, not only are they right, but that people will succumb to them or they expect money and riches, right? But on the other hand, the people that don't get that, they're not so sure about themselves, right? They're not 100% certain that they deserve, um, whether, whether, whether it's wealth, might be health, uh, it might be love. If you're not 100% certain and you're wishy-washy about it, or you might think sometimes like, oh, I really need to get more money and you might try for a little bit, but there's still this like underlying block in you that believes that you don't deserve it, then you're not going to get it, right? Because you're not 100% certain that you deserve it. Um, and, and that's where the, not only the boundaries, but also um, almost like the, the victim, right? Like we, we play the victim and you really need to train yourself to get out of that. And I do go over all of this in soul expansion school. Um, I know I had mentioned that before. I'm going to run that again in February. So these type of things, these type of aspects that we won't let ourselves be because we see other people acting like that, even though they're getting what they want, we don't want to be those type of people, right? We don't want to be someone who is overly angry or something, right? And we just end up getting a getting a energetic connection to them because we're we're denying that, right? I hope that makes sense. Um, the last question question is: Do you easily take offense when it seems um, someone has judged you, right? Um, I 
feel I totally do that like I'm like a yes to all of these questions which is funny so I must I I know that I have a lot of work to do I'm sure you guys will have a lot of work to do as well um the key is honesty and an open heart going forward and being non-judgmental with yourself um but really again you have to find the underlying uh meanings and causes because if you did not, um, for example, like if you don't like aggressive people and you know for a fact that you are not an aggressive person, um, it's almost like you won't let yourself go there, right? It's it's, it's the shadow aspects. Um, so you can kind of tell with any of these questions um, if you have a cord when an emotional response comes up in any of like these type of situations right um you might observe someone else's like inappropriateness um and then just be hey that person it is what it is that's fine uh no cord would be attached in that situation but if you're like working yourself up and you're being like i can't believe that this person's doing this um and you're getting an emotional response there is a cord attachment there and you are getting something out of it uh, which is also very hard to admit, right? Um, you know, it might make you look good and that's why you have that attachment. So for example, um, if someone's really angry and you're just like, wow, I can't believe that person's acting like that and you get worked up over it. And now you're getting something out of it because you look like the better person to a third party, right? you're getting that specialness or that um, you're feeling more superior and wise. Um, so this is also shadow work, right? Like why did we need that in the first place? Why did we even have um, that thought? Why do you need to feel superior and have this emotional um, response to make yourself seem better? Um, but in order to truly be free, you need to heal the underlying issues again. Otherwise, um, cutting a cord will be a short-term solution because either it's gonna like happen again to the same exact person or you're gonna attract another person into your life or another object or another situation into your life where um, a new energetic cord will attach to you. So again, you have to heal the underlying issues. Um, so some of these strands, again, will represent something that we aren't acknowledging or owning about ourselves. Um, and it, it's very common to have strands connected to those who have qualities that we don't. So for an example, like, again, like I almost pride myself in not being an angry person. And really, um, it takes a lot for me to get pushed, probably because, um, I am almost like afraid to be angry because I have bad associations with anger, right? So I'm almost like, I avoid that. I deny it. I don't want that in my life. Well, wouldn't you know, but I have so many angry people around me in my life, people that are very confident, very domineering, and very um, over-the-top angry. Right, and they have no problem showing it, and they're not apologetic about it. Um, so there you go. It, it's like these type of things that um, you can kind of start to piece together information so that you can start to heal these underlying problems. Um, once you find the source, you know, the people, the problems, the um, you know, e even the objects you might get, like if there's something in your home that that is you have a negative cord to, you might get the courage to throw it away. You might get the courage to throw a lot of stuff away. Um, so again, so feeling these type of emotions and feeling like someone is absolute evil, right? And you're spending time sick and disgusted over these people that are cruel, unfair, and unkind. It actually does more damage to you than it does to them because you're giving them power, right? Um, and, you know, the more damage 
you do to yourself, the harder it's going to be to clear your energetic field of, of that, right? So the best revenge that you can take is to totally clear your energetic field from these people, from these situations for good. And in order to do this, you have to surrender your judgment and the need to be right, which is extremely hard because we are human. And, uh, and it's hard. It's very, very hard. So I really wanted to tell you this information prior so that you're not going and cutting your cords and you're going to come back and be like, Bianca, what the hell? Uh, nothing has changed. I'm still being affected by this person. They're still boiling my blood. Um, they're still sucking my energy. And this is the reason why. And also um, cutting cords doesn't mean like that you're unaffected by them, right? It just means like they're not in your field anymore. Um, and it doesn't mean that that person will change or the situation will change. And it doesn't mean that you're going to have a good relationship with them. Um, but it also doesn't mean that you're going to stop caring about them too, if it is a loved one. Uh, but it's basically a gift to yourself to clear the cords, right? Because I think we get to a point where we are, like I said, um, very affected. And I think that if you guys are like me, there's going to be a lot more than just one person in one situation in your life. And they're only here for us to learn and to grow. Because um, once we learn to kind of cleanse our soul a little bit of these things, um, that's when your body really starts to vibrate a lot higher than it was before, right? And then when you vibrate at such a high level, that's when you start attracting the things that you actually want into your life, but you have to clean up the weeds, the mud, the bullshit, um, and the drama. Like once you start making, like go, going on this path and in this direction, there's a lot of cleaning up that you have to do, both environmentally and, you know, with in your home, but also with the people that you surround yourself with, right? And the situations that you allow yourself to, to be in. Right. And there's a lot of uh, soul searching that you have to do um, as well. But at the same time, um, after you clear your cords, right, puts you back in a place of authority, right, of your own thoughts, your own emotions and your own time. Because you spend a lot of time wasted, perhaps thinking about these things, talking about them, um, grieving over them. Um, but also sometimes you don't need to cut a cord. Right. Sometimes there are things you can do physically that will make a very big difference, like spend less time with the person or clutter, clear your home. So with after that little spiel, I'm sorry, that was 23 minutes long. My goal is to make everything quick and easy and um, and very attainable and, and very easy for you to start taking steps. So think about that. But also, I want to start talking about just one way that we can start cutting cords for those of you who um, are ready for that step. And then next week I will talk about even more ways um, just because you might find it easier for you or you might have a preference. Um, and all of these ways are actually listed in Denise Lynn's Energy Strands book. Um, I love her. She's amazing. So that is the book that will I will share all of them with you, but they are coming from her book and they are from all different types of ind indigenous um, cultures, right? She's, she's studied under Native American. She is a shaman. She's been to uh, South America studying with that indigenous people. She's been to the, I think the Aborigian, Ab something like that. I can't even think right now. Uh, she was in New Zealand and Australia. So she studied under a lot of different uh, shamanic practitioners. She made a name for herself. So these are very valid, valid and very, um, like these are going to work. That's all I'm saying. They're, they're going to work. Okay. But you have to do the work before the methods will actually cut the cords and keep the cords away. So prior to cord cutting, um, you need to focus to center. You need to clear all your emotions, all your thoughts, 
all your frustrations. You need to be in a place of calm, of compassion, and of love. And um, if you are experiencing anger or hatred, um, the cord will just reattach easily. Um, so please do not do that. If you need to go in calm and like almost like an observer to to this, you cannot have your ego in it. When your ego is in it, there ten there it makes everything messy. Um, so the first thing you really want to do is cleanse yourself. You can do this with uh, salt scrub in the bath in the shower. Um, you can smudge yourself. You can wear. It's good to wear light clothing. Right, very light colored clothing, not black. Um, drink plenty of water. Make sure you're hydrated. That makes the energy flow through your body more easily. Um, you always want to write down your intention. Right, you know who who do you want to release yourself from? What do you want to release yourself from? Um, you can place this on an altar. You can burn this afterwards. You can light a candle and place it under it. You can do whatever the heck you want with it. Just write it down and be specifically clear about it. Um, obviously sit in a place that you will not be disturbed. Call upon your guides. Before I do anything, I call upon my angels, my ancestors, my guides, um, and just uh, I have a specific spirit guide that I tend to call on a lot. Angels, ancestors, and guides. Come with me help me through this process, help me purge myself, you know, talk about your intention, they will come. Even if you don't believe it, they will come when they are called upon. <sighs> so, then you want to get into a meditative state, right? And, and if you guys want, put in the comments, I will record something for you. If it's going to be easier for you to get through this, as opposed to me telling you now, if you want a recorded meditation, I will gladly do that for you. Um, so what you really want to do, and this is kind of like a visualization, you want to, you know, close your eyes, get into that meditative state, be an observer, go to what we call um, a sacred garden, just like some type of area out in nature where you are one with the universe, right? It might be a forest, it might be at the beach, it might be wherever you feel elevated right think about a place you might get goosebumps and you're just like oh this is like this is magic right this is the magic that's here on earth you want to go there right and kind of imagine um a path to wherever you are and anything like any type of person a person or any type of item or situation can walk up to you and approach you and in this place where you stand, this is where the cord cut, cutting will happen for, for this specific um, way of cord cutting, right? So you are here in your holy spot. You have, you can picture yourself with either scissors, knife, um, shears, a sword, like whatever is sharp to you that you want to use that you feel connected to. Um, imagine yourself with that. See the thing that you want to release yourself from. See the cord that binds you together. Um, and then you want to state an affirmation, right? So it's like, I hereby release and sever all cords to you that do not serve and support our highest good. I am free. You are free. Cut the cord. You can uh, find a statement that makes you feel empowered, right? That gives you strength, okay? Um, then you cut it. Sometimes um, it won't cut, right? You have a hard time cutting it or you'll see it come back again. Just keep cutting until it um, is released because obviously some of them are, are thicker than others. Some of them might be slimy, so it might be hard for you to cut. Um, then once the cord is cut, you have to offer gratitude to the other person and send them a sincere blessing, right? They are in your life to teach you a lesson so that you can grow, so you can learn something about yourself, right? And then you can move on. So you, so you should send them gratitude because you are going to literally grow and be free. And you would have never known the freedom that you will feel, right? Unless you felt the trap that it is to have an energetic cord to someone who you have a lot of emotion towards, right? 
So you can also do this with a physical knife or scissors during the meditation as long as you don't cut yourself. Always do this with your eyes open. Um, and pay particular attention to your solar plexus area because that is where a lot of cords um, attach. So, um, and then obviously when you're done with your tool, pray over it, cleanse it, wash it. You don't want to like go and reuse it. Like say you use a knife and then you like cut a piece of pie and then you ate the pie. Like it's gonna, the knife is going to have um, negative or like whatever your cord was, energy attached to it. So you need to cleanse your tool. Um, you can also use a crystal or a stone that's, that's sharp, like nothing tumbled, something that is sharp. Um, you can use a black obsidian uh, stone that looks like an arrowhead or even like a black tourmaline wand um, or any type of wand that you, you feel called to or anything like sharp. Um, something with a point you can even use. And that's what I really wanted to say today. Um, I hope that this will help you out. Um, please give me comments, feedback, anything I can do to help you. Next week I will be talking about a lot more methods uh, to cut cords if this one doesn't resonate with you. Um, and yeah, think about that. If you guys need help, uh, contact me, right? If you need help getting through these these um, meditations like I can I told you I can make a recording or if you need a one-on-one -on -one session just contact me I'm here to help um, also if you really don't know where to start and you know you have a lot of cords but you feel like you need to do a lot of the underlying soul searching um, like I said you can contact me and get on the wait list for soul expansion school in February um, I hope this has helped. I can't wait to see you next week. And if anyone actually does uh, do this clearing method and you find like you feel totally different, please let me know. I'd love to hear your success stories. Um, otherwise, I'm just talking to myself for no reason, right? So I will see you guys um, Tuesday of next week for another reading. Okay, things are going to change. I'm very excited. Um, be excited next year is going to be different this year. I was like or like this end of ending of the year um, My life is just like totally upside down uh, With this new day job that I have so I am excited for next year and I'm excited for cutting cords and um, Yes, thank you so much for being here. I love you guys. I will see you guys next week. Bye